guys welcome back to all things literature this week we are moving into the text we're moving to chapter two so let's get going the smell of cinnamon rice pudding centered the whole kitchen Tante T was sitting at the table with a bowl in front of her when I came in I felt closer to tears with each word I even thought of saying so I said nothing I sat at my usual place at the table and watched out of the corner of my eyes as she poured a bowl of rice pudding and slid it towards me. Bonjour, she said, waving a spoon in front of my face. Your bonjour, your greeting, is your passport. I kept my head down and took the spoon only when she laid it down in front of me. I did not feel like eating. But if I did not eat, we would have had to sit and stare at one another. And sooner or later, one of us would have had to say something. I picked up the spoon and began to eat. Tante T's lips spread into a little grin as she watched me. Her laughter prefaced the start of what was going to be a funny story. There were many stories that Tante T liked to tell. There were mostly sad stories, but every once in a while, there was a funny one. There was a time when she was a little girl, when my grandmother was a practicing Protestant. Grammy Ife tried to show her Christian faith by standing over the edge of a snake pit and ordering the devils back into the ground. Tante T was always bent over with laughter as she remembered the look on Grammy Ivy's face when one of the snakes started to crawl up the side of the pit towards her. My grandmother did not come out for days after that. Whether something was funny or not depended on the way Tante T told it. That morning, she could not bring the laughter out of me like she had in the past. It was even harder for her to force it out of herself. After I had eaten, I washed the dishes and put them in the basket to dry. I want to tell you a few things, Tante T said from where she was sitting at the table. You need to know certain things about your mother. Why can't you come to New York too? I interrupted. Because it is not the time yet. After you leave, I'm going back home to take care of your grandmother. I'm only hearing Cro de Rosé because of your schooling. Once you leave, I can go back. I don't know why you can't go to New York too, I said. We are each going to our mothers. That is what is supposed to happen. Your mother wants to see you now, Sophie. She does not want you to forget who your real mother is. When she left you with me, she and I, we agreed that it would only be for a while. You were just a baby then. She left you because she was going to a place she knew nothing about. She did not want to take chances with you. Tante T opened the front door and let the morning sun inside. She ran her fingers along the grilled iron as she looked up at the clear indigo sky. She picked up a broom and began to sweep the mosaic floor. My angel, she said. I would like to know that by word or by example, I have taught you love. I must tell you that I do love your mother. Everything I love about you, I loved in her first. That is why I could never fight her about keeping you here. I do not want you to go and fight with her either. In this country, there are many good reasons for mothers to abandon their children. She stopped to pound the dust out of the living room cushions. But you were never abandoned. You were with me. Your mother and I, when we were children, we had no control over anything, not even this body. She pounded her fist over her chest and stomach. When my father died, my mother had to dig a hole and drop him in it. We were a family with dirt under our fingernails. Do you know what that means? She did not wait for me to answer. 
That means we work the land. We're not educated. My father would have never dreamt that we would live in the same kind of house that people like Monsieur and Madame Augustin lives in. He, a school teacher, and we, daughters of the hill, old peasant stock, petite soyette, ragamuffins. If we can live here, if you have this door open to you, it is because of your mother. Promise me that you are not going to fight with your mother when you get there. I'm not going to fight, I said. Good, she said. It would be a shame if the two of you got into battles because you share a lot more than you know. She reached over and touched the color of my lemon-toned house dress. Everything you own is yellow, she said. Wild flower yellow, like dandelions, sunflowers, and daffodils, I added. That is right, she said. Your mother, she loved daffodils. Tantati told me that my mother loved daffodils because they grew in a place that they were not supposed to. They were really European flowers, French buds and stems, meant for colder climates. A long time ago, a French woman had brought them to Croix de Rosettes and planted them there. A strain of daffodils had grown that could withstand the heat, but they had the color of pumpkins and golden summer squash as though they had acquired a bronze tinge from the skin of the natives who had adopted them. Tantati took the card from under her pillow and put it on the night table next to the plane ticket. She said that it would be nice for me to give the card to my mother personally, even though the daffodil was gone. Thank you for joining All Things Literature Reading with Miss Moody. Leave your comments in the comment section. Please subscribe, like, and share as much as possible. Thank you.